This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by the new original comedy Search Party on TBS. Watch the mystery unravel as a lost soul and her group of self-absorbed 20-something friends search for a college acquaintance who's gone missing. Led by Aaliyah Shockett from Arrested Development, the cast of Search Party features an ensemble of young comic actors including John Early, John Reynolds, Meredith Hagner, and Brandon Michael Hall who are dragged into a bumbling, perilous pursuit to find the missing girl. They soon learn the meaning of real danger and become entangled in a sinister plot that is more than their privileged Brooklyn lifestyles ever bargained for. You can binge the entire season of Search Party, an official selection of the 2016 South by Southwest Film Festival, in one week starting Monday, November 21st at 1110 Central on TBS. From the state, Wet Hot American Summer and TBS's upcoming search party, Michael Showalter returns. Plus, we have a scientist and an expert. All of that and more all on today's... I awake to a butterfly burrowing itself inside me. A car door slams. He is here, the bag maker. I remove the poison from my urethra. It is my birthday. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, great catchphrase there, Captain Pukefish. Thank you so much for that. And uh, speaking of great, what a great show we have today. Also, great segue, I would say. Uh, what a wonderful show we have. We have a returning champion. He's been on the show at least twice, I have to say. At least twice. Am I allowed to talk now? Yes, you are. And at the most twice, I think. I, I think I've done the, the radio, the, the, the podcast twice. And, and the television, the television, television show television once. Show once. <laughs> and I got fat shamed on Twitter. And you, <laughs> and you uh, came to my defense. I do not like uh, body shaming of any sort. Uh, we're all just born into these bodies that our parents gave us and we can't control them, you know, and, yes. and occasionally they're not the way we want them. Occasionally we love them. Exactly. But, you know, we all go through it. Am I yes, right? Absolutely. And uh, so I, I don't care for that. Uh, and anyone who's brave enough to put themselves on film and we shot the show on film. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> was that, was that, that would have been insane. Was, that, uh, was it Panorama? What's that? Is Cinerama? That some, cine, I don't know. 17 Smell nine? a vision? Was it sell, smell a vision? <laughs> you, you and I are old enough to remember those tricks that people used to, and I'll introduce you in a second, the tricks that people <laughs> used to uh, try to get people to come into the theater. Now it's 3D. That's we the, had 3D back then. We had 3D when, when back we were, then. We had 3D. But the, remember all the tricks that they would try to, they would like do smell a vision well, uh, and 3D. Those are the two I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know what? There was one where the chairs moved. Oh, yes. The, uh, well, the rumble boxes. Well, it was like interactive. There was an attempt to do a kind of interactive movie going experience where like, if you're in the car, the chair would feel like you're in a car. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, we we saw Fast and Furious uh, with that. I think it was really? called Rumblebox Technology. Interesting. Uh, Aziz Ansari and Rob Hubel and uh, myself and Kulop, we all went to go see it and tweeted through it. How and, was it? Uh, I really liked it. They sold the the chairs for your home as well um, that you could buy for your home because all of the the Blu-rays and DVDs are in, uh, encoded with that technology as well. Right. If you have the chair, it'll make your your right. chair rumble. Right, right, right. But it, it fell out and of fashion. And it would tilt backwards and it would all sorts Turn of you upside down, upside down, shake you, give you a nice shake. Uh, cook you a meal, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Michael Showalter is here. Hello, Michael. Hello. Always a How pleasure. are you? I'm very well, very well. Um, it's great to see you. We all know you, uh, of course. Uh, you started out on the seminal sketch comedy series, The State. Uh, it's uh, number 68 on Rolling Stone's greatest uh, 100 greatest TV shows of all time. Of all time, really? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And yes. uh, uh, how, how, do you, how do you feel being 68? That's a no. little one above oh, what I where I would. You mean land. in that number? You mean in, you don't mean literally? Th that's my age. You mean what's what? Um, I feel really good about it. I feel I you're not 68 years old. No, no. Hmm. Um, I will be one day. I don't mean to body shame you, but you look really old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you, with the, with these two kids and the and the mortgage on the house, oh. sometimes I feel really old. <laughs> you hope to be 68 one day. You I think, think you're going to get there? I think I'll make it. Yeah, it's so far out. 
Um, uh, well, time flies. <laughs> time you- flies. But um, no, I feel. I mean, I feel. I feel shocked and honored that we're on that list. A little shock and awe, nerd. Did you open up the magazine going, "Where am I?" No, I know I, I got to be in here. No, I saw Michael Black tweeted it. Oh, okay. that's my only information. I don't know any other mo- TV shows that are on the list. <laughs> I only know from a tweet that Michael Black sent that that the state is number sixty eight. You don't know the sixty seven? They're just supposedly better than you. <laughs> I could guess what some of them are. I bet Seinfeld's on there. <laughs> Seinfeld probably I one or Sa- two. I bet Simpsons is on there. The Sopranos is on there. I think True Detective season one. Sure, sure. Uh, Westworld. Com- Comedy Bang Bang's probably sure. on there. I doubt it. I really, really doubt that. I, I do know I talked to Tom Lennon uh, uh, once about uh, their Rolling Stone, I believe, similarly had a uh, – best sketch shows of the 90s list that the state was on and he was very upset that Mr. Show not I very upset is probably mischaracterizing this but uh, Mr. Show was number 1 and the state was number like, 3 w- right I think there were some good sketch shows in the 90s there were that there was really kind were. of an, a, a a decade for sketch shows you had the kids in the hall you had Mr. Show you had us you had the UCB had their show uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh Amy Sedaris and uh Stephen Colbert had a show on Comedy Central Exit, Exit Fifty Seven, I believe. Like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a uh, the uh, obviously live. You had Living Color. You had SNL. You had there's a big lot of stuff going on. Boom period. Boom period. Mm-hmm. Boom period. Now, one interesting thing about SNL is the show doesn't go on because it's ready. It goes on because it's eleven thirty on Saturday. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, I mean, they have all sorts of things that are incredible. I mean, they're like the the read through on the. The, sure. the, the the rehearsal is this incredible moment. The right all you can eat Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Well, there. they never sleep on right. They don't sleep on Tuesdays. They never sl- it, they never sleep it, the entire week. Or is it Wednesday that they don't sleep? They one, don't, of, one night in the week they don't sleep. They don't sleep the entire week and they catch up on Mondays. They sleep all day on Monday, twenty four hours I straight. I see. It's an amazing thing over there. Oh, um, but God. you started out in the state. Smash cut to now. You have a new show called Search Party. Which yes. premieres on TBS. Yes. So this is a show that I'm uh, the co-creator of, of this show with two really uh, talented young uh, writer-directors named Sarah Violet Bliss and Charles Rogers, as well as uh, uh, Lily Burns and Tony Hernandez, who do all the great shows in New York, such as Broad City and The Schumer Show and stuff like that. And it's a show about uh, starring Alia Shokat and John Early and John Reynolds and Meredith Hagner. Four um, great talents. Amazing. Amazing. Who uh, are friends and uh, – They're friends – wait. They're friends off screen or they're – They're friends in the world of the show. They're in the friends. world of the show, they're yes. friends. Okay. It's good to, to make that distinction. Well, I think they've become friends since we since we shot the show. Work but, friends. But they didn't start out that way. So they're work um, friends in I life. I don't know if they're – they might actually be real friends too. Really? I don't know. I love when I can make that transition. Well, I don't. I, honestly, I don't know. That's, it's I, a little I, personal to I, ask. I, I, I would get imagine. the sense that they are definitely work friends, though. <laughs> um, is there one that's sort of ostracized? Is there one that you would characterize as the outcast in that work friendship or real friendship? No, they, they really get along. The, the sense I get is that they really get along. Okay. Um, and when you say the sense I get, is that from spying on them, from peeping on them? It's from being around cra- the, the craft services area, uh, you know, mm-hmm. hanging out on set when, you know, in the in the hair and makeup area. Peering just, through your binoculars. No, no, no. There's no uh, spying. There's it's, no spying at all. No, no. It's show. just from being in there. It's just from it's just from coexisting with them as you normal do. human relations. Yes, as you do in a work environment, you coexist. You get a vibe for it. Certainly, you know? very good. And uh, they, um, but these are these are great questions and important important and good follow ups too. The um, just wait till you hear the follow ups to my follow ups. Is that should that's I coming? Wait? Yeah, should no, I wait? I'm saying just they'll wait happen for that. when they happen. Okay, so she uh, anyway, but they a friend of theirs from they all went to college together, and a friend of theirs from college has gone missing. And how do they find out this information, or is that giving away too many spoilers? There's a there's a there's a, a missing person sign that uh, the main character played by Alia Shokat uh, sees on a on a telephone pole. On a te- just randomly happens to see on the telephone pole. Correct. Has facial recognition in her eyeballs, says that's the person that we all used to know. Hey, we know her. Okay. Uh, Hasn't seen her in a while? Nope. Haven't, they haven't seen each other probably in, in five years. Mm-hmm. 
but they all have memories of her. And, oh, you remember that girl? We kind of knew her. And this sets in motion a kind of a uh, a trip down a rabbit hole in search of this missing gal that takes our characters through um, a kind of a misadventure where they need to confront uh, their, in, their relationships, their lives, um, twists and turns. It's a comedy, but it also has a pretty strong sort of creepy Twin Peaksy mystery thing going on and um it's got a twist ending and i can't tell you what it is but it's got it's got a it's got a lot of plot it's a it's wow. a it's a serialized show show so there's mm-hmm. a, a you know there's a who done it going on and we have some great amazing people guesting on the show parker posey and ron livingston and uh many many awesome great people are on the show are you sure you can't tell us the ending um all right. So basically, no, I can't. Of you, course I can't. Uh, I like, are, are you like me? Do you, when you get a book, do you read the last line first no. and then put it down and never read anything else? No, you do that. I do that so I can say I read the book. And if anyone says you didn't read you that really book, do that. I quote the last line and I say, sure I did. Do you really do that? Oh yeah. All the time. Every single day of my life. So wow. that, that's why, you know, when I quote binge, Unquote. You just watched the last quote, episode. Watch, unquote. Yeah. <laughs> I just watched the last episode. Yeah. Um, well, and now this is on TBS. CBS. And it starts on the 21st. Right. And uh, there's eight, uh, 10 episodes, and they're going to like air them all in a week in a very unorthodox fashion. They're just going to like binge, binge air them. Binge air them. They're now, binge air people them. can watch them in w- at whatever pace they like, but they're yeah. going to binge air them. They're going to binge air them. Wow. And so people who are hooked into this mystery that starts on episode one, presumably, mm-hmm. there's it doesn't start on episode two, right? The mystery part. There's not in, one episode of them fucking around. No. <laughs> okay. No. So the mystery starts on episode one. People are going to be able to resolve that mystery within a week's time. Yes. And I'm hoping genuinely that people are guessing at what's going on. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's it, it's it's the kind of show where we have a lot of – colorful characters that you go, gee, wonder how they're involved. I wonder how they're involved. And I would love for people to speculate. Mm -hmm. It's like a a who shot JR or a who shot Negan. Sure. Kind of situation. Negan. I don't know. From the walking dead. Everyone was like, who shot Negan? Who shot Negan? Uh, uh, What's uh, which one was Negan? Negan. uh, He's the, he's the guy with the big uh, bat baseball bat. And they're like, who shot Negan? I think maybe I stopped watching after before Negan showed up. Did you wait? Did you see the zombie apocalypse? Yes, I watched at least the first three seasons of Walking Dead. At least? Yes. How many are there? There's a lot. There, I believe there's seven or eight at this point. Yeah. Here's, here's my big thing about that, mm-hmm. which is like it's never – it's always hot. <laughs> they never do – I don't want to watch a How show where it's never, always hot. I want there to be a season of The Walking Dead that's set in fall or winter. Yes, exactly. Because like, it's always like cricket, like the locusts, and it's hot, and there's like sweaty rotting. Like, give us a winter season where like the zombie flesh isn't rotting. Have one of them put on a coat at yeah. least once, yeah, you know? It's so sweaty and dirty and ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh, great review. <laughs> I love the show, but I need I need to see some cold weather zombies. Maybe stuff. a breeze just floats Let, in exactly. at one point, you know? It's, and it's, they all go, ooh, well, I can well, stop fanning myself. it's always that wave of locusts yeah. sound. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah, exactly. I can't really imitate it. How, can you imitate no, it? Not no, not at all. Not at all. How uh, uh, Search Party, obviously, 10 episodes uh, coming out very soon on TBS, uh, and I can't wait to see it. What is happening with the Wet Hot American Sun? <sighs> Summer show. Well, uh, we're doing a, a second season of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're about to go into production on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 10 years later. 10 years later than the prequel? Yes. So because I the, guess the prequel is the same time well, the, period. That's then. two months earlier than right. the original movie. This is 10 years later. In the original movie, the main characters agree to meet in 10 years and see what kind of people they've blossomed into. And so uh, the second season, or the set, this version, this iteration of the show, is uh, set in 1991. 1991, mm-hmm. and that's not too far off from when the actual movie came out. Uh, that's right. That's right. Um, because the movie came out in 98. Is that right? The, no, or? the movie came out in maybe even in 91. The mo- wait, the movie? No, no, 2001. <laughs> 2000, oh, right, right, right. 2001. <laughs> 2001. Um, so we're about 10 years off from when the movie came out. Right. So um, we're close to when it came out. Is it is it set at camp? Or yes. It it's is. set at camp and it's set in New York. 
uh, it, it sort of a nod to the reunion flicks of of that time period, St. Elmo's Fire and what have you, where we get to see our characters like in their urban lives, mm-hmm. make, trying to make it. In the are they city. all yuppies now? Like some the big of them chill? are. Yeah, some of them yeah. are. Not Young urban them, professionals, y- y- yuppies or you know slackers. That was a thing. Oh yeah, I remember um, that. Grunge was was coming on. So some of them are coming into, on strong in ninety one. Some of them as I are into the grunge movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, basically, watch singles and you'll understand. Watch what was singles. Happening. Uh, watch singles. Saint Elmo's Fire and The Big Chill. All three. It's yes, a great triple then, feature. And you don't need to watch the second se- The second. <laughs> when does it come out? Show. Can you say? I believe that comes out in in the summer of. This next this summer. summer of 2017, Correct. yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And the pre- and, then, and then I did a movie with with Kumail Nanjiani. Ooh! Uh, now you're speaking my language. Uh, 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 a movie that Kumail and uh, his wife Emily wrote mm. uh, that that I directed. Ooh! Uh, a great director, obviously the Baxter. Right. Yes. Hello, that. my name is Doris. Hello, my name is Doris. Yes, which my wife watched on a plane recently and um, greatly enjoyed with uh, Sally Field. Sally Field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, so we did this movie uh, over the over the this spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, great, great story. True story. When's this coming out? How many reels is it? Tell us everything. Right now, we're at eight reels. <laughs> you're we're at eight, eight right we're now. At eight reels. You right trying now. to expand or are you trying to get down to seven? Uh, we're, I think it's going to stay at eight. Stay at eight. It's going to stay at eight. Mm-hmm. Eight is great. Eight's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Um, seven would have, would have been a little better, but I'll I'll eight's fine. I'll take eight. Uh, that one I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't know. What do I you like know. better? Do you like uh, being in front of the camera or behind oh, the I, camera? A hundred percent. I don't enjoy being in front of the camera. You don't enjoy no, it? Not at all. Wait, but but uh, you're in Wet Hot American Summer. What you, else am I in? Uh, comedy Bang Bang, pretty famously. Yeah, and I got fat shamed. That's true. Did you get any of that for Wet Hot or? Actually, no, which is shocking because uh, I really deserved it on that one. Um, <laughs> Wait, you think you deserve fat well, shaming? I was really, Just expect- not on Comedy I was Bang really Bang. expecting it. Actually, because of my experience on Comedy Bang Bang. Mm-hmm. This, you were sort this, of stealing yourself? This is yes, true. I'm not oh. lying. Oh. I, because, because it was like well, – People are not nice on, no. on, 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 in general and especially on the internet. Um, one of the things they really aren't nice to you about is if you say anything negative about Bernie Sanders. <laughs> right. Um, That's the number one thing that people are not nice about on the internet. Yes. Um, <laughs> number two is people's bodies. Yes. But uh, yeah, so that wasn't fun. And then in Wet Hot, I'm like in a tank top the right. whole time and, and like a dumb wig. I mean, I look like those like Beatles cover, band, Beatles cover <laughs> bands that are like all the 50, Fab Four. 50-year-old dads right. in like ridiculous wigs. <laughs> and like Ringo, they're like playing Ringo, but they're wearing b- b- the Beatles, the floppy right. wig They're era. trying to fit but into they're like, but they're playing a Nehru the, jacket. <laughs> and they're playing the Beatles when the Beatles were literally in their early 20s. <laughs> right, yeah. That's what I looked like in, in Wet Hot. <laughs> and so, but amazingly, no. People, but you didn't I, get any of it. I actually did not, which I was shocked by. P- uh, if you're listening out there, people's bodies change over the years. And we should just be thankful to someone like Michael Showalter for bringing back a show. And he shouldn't have to put that thought in his mind about, well, I don't know if I want to do another Wet Hot American Summer because I look different. No, you shouldn't even have to think about that. We should just be thankful to you. Yeah. I mean, and that's not, to be honest, that isn't the reason I don't want to be in front of camera. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's I, But it's more just, I mean, I'd be interested to know what you have to say about this. I just, over the years, have uh, lost the desire to perform in that way, uh, though if I am offered something, I often will do it. Hence, hence your the show. comedy. If bang you bang. just say, "Hey, come do this thing," nine times out of ten, if I'm available, I'll do it. But I don't want to go audition for something. I don't want to. Uh, I don't. W- when I get out of bed in the morning, I don't think. I want to go work on some sides and really, <laughs> but but that's a good thing to I'm do. I'm the opposite. That, that's I, a cool thing to do. I have great respect for actors. Give me that spotlight, respect. baby. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. turn well, it right on me. Yeah. Why is it over there? Bring it around I over here. You. I think you. But, but that's probably right, right? I mean, you 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 were you were sort of behind the scenes and said, I I want. I got to break I out. That. I got to. I, I got. I have to I be recognized at a Chipotle. I can do that. I want this. You're like, I want to go to Comic-Con and like be be adored. Not, and not be able to walk around. Yes. 
or do anything. That's what I want. Um, well, you're great in front of the camera. You're great behind the camera. You're great uh, just at a typewriter, which is what I presume you write off. No, I have a laptop computer. A laptop mm-hmm. computer. And you put that on your lap and it's... Not always on my lap. I'll put it on a desk. It gets too hot sometimes on your lap. It gets hot or just I prefer to put it on a desk. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that due to the height of the computer and the ra- the desk to your fingertips? Or uh, Yeah. I think it's a it's a spatial thing. Follow up to that follow up is uh, do you have all the keys on your computer? Are they all there, or are you missing any? No, they're all there. For they're sure. all there. Great, for that sure. helps for sure. Yeah, well, I have yeah. a friend who's a writer who's missing two keys. Are you and serious? I don't understand how he on does the it. laptop for ten years now. What is it? Just the weird little plastic thing underneath the key? It's part of the space bar, and <laughs> then I believe it's like. But if you hit the space bar, does something happen? He he has it's it's part of the space bar, so he has to hit the space bar with his other hand and he's taught himself how to type instead using. of just getting another computer. Exactly. It's insane to me. That so, is insane. So you have them all. That's good. Yeah. I got all my keys and I got a little system. I have a little printer over here and I mm-hmm. plug it in and da da da. I'll print something out. It's all very cool. By the way, for the listener, Michael is miming all of this yes, right now. And yes. it is, am- your space work is incredible. Amazing. I know you have to be in front of the camera more, Michael, <laughs> please. But like, I love, this thing that I'm talking about, mm-hmm. it like gives me so much pleasure. Like it works. The printer, whoosh, it all comes out whoosh. and it's a, it's a black and white printer. It prints like a dream. Mm-hmm. Like, Printers uh, d- usually don't work, right? Black and white printer. That's the secret. That's the secret. Because that's color. Secret. That w- g- don't, Always running out of ink. D- running out of ink and getting screwed up. Go get the black and white printer. I've had this thing for five years. It, I'm telling you, it prints like a dream. So if you want to be a writer out there or you want to work in the entertainment business at all, get the black and white the printer. And That's white the printer. number one tip to su- success. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you have it. Michael yeah. Showalter on tips for success. The black and white printer is number one mm-hmm. with a bullet. Mm-hmm. What's, and, a, what's a bullet? What uh, do you mean? Meaning, uh, it's it's traveling very fast to number one. Oh. Uh, at the time that people came up with that analogy, a bullet was the fastest thing in the world. Uh-huh. Nowadays, if they were trying to say number one with, uh, they would probably say like rocket ship to Mars or. Uh, but uh, there wasn't. Okay, sure. At the time, this was back in the forties when there were a lot of gangsters. Uh, bullets but I'm were saying the fastest you're thing. saying that it's passing something to get there, but there was nothing else there. No, it's accompanying a bullet. So meaning it's number one with a bullet, meaning it hitches a ride with this bullet that has been shot out of but a gun. But it's not getting – it doesn't need to get anywhere. It's already there. There was nothing else there. It arrived at number one with a, with its bullet is – is you know, it, it, it got fired out but of a gun with a bullet. It was just there. I'm it, saying it, well, it didn't need to arrive because there was nothing else. See what I'm saying? I see. So you're acting like it passed something to get to number one, and I'm saying there well, was no, there was no, there was no number one before it. That asks the question: if if something is is alone in a room and it walks around the room, it's not passing anything, but it is arriving at a different place in the room. Correct? Fair enough. Thank you very Fair much. Enough. With a bullet. With a bullet. Did you know that if you are trying to get somewhere, and every time you try to get there, you go half the distance. You'll never reach it. You'll never get there. Never, ever, ever. You Always go the full distance yes. or try to pass it. Yes. You will never get there. If you try to do things halfway, you'll never get, get there. there. Exactly. Michael, I love your words of wisdom. Uh, search party, TBS, November 21st, every episode. I want to make sure everyone watches every episode. It's, and a, does, it's a great show. Don't uh, put your the, DVR on the, random. The cast, is, the cast is so great. It's a funny show. It's a creepy, weird, cool mm-hmm. show. I think people are going to enjoy it quite a bit. Very good. We need to take a break. When we come back, we have uh, a couple of other people from different uh, occupations. That's exciting. I mean, from the world of show business to the world of uh, science. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting, right? Very interesting. All right. We need to take a break. We'll be right back with more Michael Showalter, more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> a lot of times you can get stuck doing things the old way. A lot of people, you know, you, you hear about old school and some people are old school. A lot of people just don't like new things. So a lot of, and a lot of businesses that happens too. They get stuck doing things the old way just out of habit, including, unfortunately, vital operations like mailing and shipping that can be so time consuming. If you are still making trips to the post office, you need to be new school. You need stamps.com. 
With Stamps.com, you could do all your mailing, all your shipping, right from your desk. Never, ever, 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 never, berver, blurver, go to the post office again, my dear boy. With Stamps.com, print postage for any letter, any package. They don't care one whit about what you're sending. Using your own computer and printer, and then you just hand it to your mail carrier or drop it in a mailbox. Oh, it's so easy to use and convenient, and it's going to save you money. You're going to get special postage discounts you cannot even get at the post office. We use Stamps.com here at Earwolf, and right now you can sign up for Stamps.com by using my promo code BANGBANG, what else, for this special offer, a four-week trial plus a $110 bonus offer including postage and a digital scale. So don't wait. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on that microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in Bang Bang. That is Stamps.com. Enter Bang Bang. Welcome to the new millennium. (laughs) <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here with Michael Showalter, a legendary comedic actor, writer, director, The State, uh, Wet Hot American Summer, uh, the upcoming Search Party, and uh, a, a, a career that has spanned over 20 years, almost 25 years at this point, and uh, is still going strong and doesn't have any signs of slowing nor stopping. Is that fair to say? Slowing or stopping. I hope not. I hope not. But at a certain point, you will either hit 68 or you will perish before that. And it's everything has to end, right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you want to be one of those guys who works until you're an old man? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You For know? sure. You look at like uh, Marty Scorsese. Marty Scorsese? Mar- Marty Scorsese. Oh, oh, I see. You know, he's an old man and he's still making some of the best movies of his look life. Look at Woody Allen. Look at this guy Look making at Woody Allen. He I, never stops. Pound for pound, I think his recent work, especially that Amazon series, better than anything he ever did. Did you watch it? Have you seen? Oh it? yeah, every single episode. It's so it's better than Annie Hall, better than Manhattan. Just uh, uh, reserve six hours of your weekend and just watch that thing and just you know like uh, shut the door, lock lock your office door. Is what I'm trying to okay. say. Do you have an, you have an office? You were miming sure. you sure, were miming the typewriter or the uh, the yeah. laptop and the printer, but I didn't I get a sense office. of the space. I have an office. Wait, you've really seen it? Is it out? No. Yeah, of course. Is it out? <laughs> yes, it's out. It's out. Yes, okay. of course. It's amazing. Better than anything he's ever done. Better than Annie Hall and Manhattan, you say? Combined. If you Com- were to if combined. you were to overlay those two films on top of each other, that would be the best film ever made. As far as I, because well, you know that uh, Annie Hall was actually a different movie called Anadonia. Really, that he extracted the Annie Hall storyline from a separate from script. A he was whole making? other movie. He made the movie. He actually shot a different movie. Felt after watching the movie that the best part of the movie was his relationship with An- the Annie Hall character, and just junked the other stuff. Junked the other stuff. Mm. And then wrote more shit and shot another movie that became Annie, Annie Hall. That's incredible. And he also, uh, there's a movie that he did. I don't. Take the Money and Run. No, no. Love well, and Death. Uh, I don't remember the title of the movie, but it was one of his very serious films. Okay. That he shot it, completely recast it, and shot it again. Shot, t- so totally shot it again. So a different version of this movie is out there somewhere. Uh, oh, I think he destroyed it. Oh, don't destroy it, I think Woody. he destroyed it, but he he made the movie, decided he didn't like the casting, recast the movie, and shot the movie again. Did you know that Annie Hall is actually uh, probably the first film where you could kind of take Woody a little more seriously than you used it to? It was a turning point for him. Did, yeah, so you did know that. Okay. I did know that. That was a yes. bit of trivia that I had. Yes, he. that was a sort of a turn – that was a – a, a transition, a career transition for him. Mm-hmm. Because yes. we had all known the silly, funny, goofy bananas Woody. and take the money and run, as you had sure, mentioned love earlier. Love and death. Love and death. Uh, uh, a yeah. Midsummer Night sex comedy. Sure. We knew all of these and we we're like, okay, we get it, Woody. He's, we know what you do. He's funny. He's silly. He makes us laugh. And then he does this movie, Annie Hall, which Screech is. Screech, abrupt right mm-hmm. turn. This, this, uh, 
movie that sheds light on on the human condition and is profound in many ways and has become an iconic uh, movie, some would say. It's, a lot of people would say that that's one of the movies that people should watch mm-hmm, if you're going to mm-hmm, watch movies. Mm-hmm. And they'll say that it's they'll say that it's had great influence on the romantic comedy genre, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's people, what, people can trace its influence. Some people will say that. Yeah. Some people would say that, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I agree with I that. I don't think so. Um, it's there. I don't get it. I don't get it. Personally. No, I don't get it. Yeah, not a fan. I don't see the connection. Nope. I like movies like Transformers. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, that's God, some good shit. I love that movie. All right, let's get to our next guest. Speaking of Transformer, here's a guy who transformed the very industry in which he works, uh, one would imagine, if he's any good at it. He is a seismologist. Uh, please welcome Dr. Brian Blouse. Hello, Brian. Oh, oh gosh. Ah. Oh. Hi, Scott. Hi. How Hi, uh, this is Michael Show Walter. Of uh, are you a sketch comedy fan? I'm a huge uh, fan. Yes, great to see you. A huge Mr. fan of Show sketch Walter. comedy or sketch- of Michael? I'm a gigantic fan. Uh, huge, huge fan. Great to great to meet you, Mr. Nice Show to meet you too. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Uh, Blouse. Mr. Blouse. Yes, Dr. Brian Blouse. Um, you can you can point that microphone. At yourself. A I'm not sure lower? why. No, no, no. You're pointing at your belly button. I'm not sure why. You, yeah. Can we get it around here? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, okay. much you, better. Should oh. I? T- can I? Yeah, if you could help him out, that would. Yeah, yeah. The, merely tilting it towards your mouth is so straight. Just tuck straight into. Straight in. <laughs> okay. I'm a little out of sorts. I, uh, I, I had to come up in the uh, the elevator, which I don't prefer to do. Really? Uh, you yeah. take. The, you're a <sighs> stairs guy. <sighs> yeah, I take the stairs. Mm. Uh, but the valet directed me to an elevator, and I was in there. And uh, it's right next to the stairs. There's it's there's two doorways. One says stairs, and then one is yeah. an elevator door. It says elevator. I didn't want to seem like a coward to the valet, and uh, and so I took the elevator as as he directed me. But um, is that a problem for you, seeming like a coward to to people? People have said that to me. Yeah, uh, people have said that to me before. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I move on, and I move, and I move past it. Right. Now you mentioned uh, I, I got to set the record straight. You mentioned right at the top there that I may have um, uh, I can't remember the term transformed, transformed the industry. That's right. You're making the segue from the movie Transformers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I may have transformed the industry, and there is no transforming the industry. It's no industry. It's a science. It's a science. Yes, you it's, you do get paid for it, though. Yes. So yes. there's a bit of an industry of hiring seismologists, I would imagine. Well, head hunting. I, I get. I, yes, in a, in a manner of speaking. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, sure. I'm not a coward. No, no. Gosh. When it comes to the truth, <laughs> for gosh sakes, no. I'm not saying that. But we do think of it as a science or a grouping of three sciences: a triad or a trinity of sciences: uh, seismology, seismography. Uh, as well as astrology, uh, but that's uh, more or less been forgotten. But I do hold a doctorate in that as well. In seismology, seismology that was something popular in the fifties and sixties. It mm. was more about looking to the stars to try to determine uh, when an earthquake might hit. Uh, and I can imagine. Largely, I mean, the tides are affected by the moon and the, the stars and all of that. So I, I don't I, know. I'm not a tidal guy. I'm not. I'm not. You, wait, you, I don't have a doctor in tides, so I wouldn't know. I, I would. I would think that you would. I mean, you're a seismologist and know how okay, the Earth what's works. Your, what's I, your th- give, me, give me your theory again. What was it? The, well, my, Michael, you you know this that the uh, uh, the 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 moon and and uh-huh. it, it and and its movements affect the tides and make them bigger or make them smaller. Okay. The, the water on the Earth. The moon up in the up in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. And the, that affects. It affects how big the the water is the in wave, the ocean. Like the, the surfers, <laughs> the surfer. I guess it, that's kind of reductive, but yeah, the surfers. What the what, they, sur, what the surfers surf on? Yes, the water. Uh, I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's not a crazy theory. It sounds crazy when you explain it like, I like that. Hearing but, it. Okay, all right. I like it. Anyway, you're a seismologist. You're yes. a you. You're a doctor. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Michael, are, uh, you, in, are for, you interested in earthquakes? You've been out you've been living here for now a couple of years. A couple of years. Have you experienced one? Uh only the Can I answer? Of, can I answer? Yes, he has. What you because we all have and because I didn't mean to jump that's in. That's fine. I no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. You may experience one and you didn't even know it. You may experience mm. one in your sleep and you mm. didn't recognize it. You may experience a very low-grade one. There may be one going on right now, and all of us are completely oblivious to it right now. So I don't think that that's a weird question, though, because if I were to say to Michael, Michael, have you ever met right. a murderer? 
You don't know if you've met a murderer. Okay, yes, but- he has. <laughs> oh. Statistically, yes, he certainly has. There are murderers. Like shaking hands uh, meeting? Well, you've met a lot of people, I imagine, in your sure. line of work. Sure. I mean, Hollywood, uh, sure. you know. Uh, I mean, Louis C.K. kills every night. <laughs> <laughs> He's a murderer. <laughs> But we're actually talking about someone who's like literally oh. e- extinguished a human life. Oh, 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 and 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 we're we're not talking about like vehicular manslaughter, like a Rebecca Gayhart kind of thing right. or anything like that. We're not talking even. about or like, Vince Neil from Motley Crue. Sure, yeah, we're talking about like like the intent to kill. Sure, sure. Premeditation. Uh, yes, yes. So everyone has met someone like that. Statistically, probably, I'd put my money on it. I'd put a lot of money on it. Okay, okay. I actually. Uh, Grew up in Princeton, New Jersey, which you may or may not know. I did not know that, but I love information of all sorts. And at our rival high school, I went to Princeton High School, public school. What was the rival? Harvard? Princeton Day School. (laughs) That's Was it the same school, just different times that people went to it? That's college. Oh, okay. Harvard and Princeton, that's college. This is high school. Princeton High School. Princeton Day School was a prep school. Okay. Attended by uh, Eric and Lyle Menendez. Menendez. Oh, well, wow. So I think I do know some murderers yes. after all. Well, well, well. And if he hasn't shaken their hand, I bet he's at least given them high five because it was high school and that's what you would do probably. Yeah, they were, the- they were on the tennis team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on the junior varsity uh like third doubles, like I was as far on the bench of the tennis team. You, as but you were moving your way up. You could have. Like mm-hmm. a bullet, trying to. <laughs> uh, and no, I, I, I was so bad that I didn't continue with it. But the Menendez brothers were very good tennis players. They and were. I, we, and I remember them well from that time as, wow, those guys are good tennis players. And their dad is a really scary dude. He was scary back then, mm, yes, really. And everyone talked about it. So when you heard what they did, were you kind of like, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. I get it. He was torment. Wow. He was known as a tormentor. And they're so good at tennis. They were really good. So it kind of makes sense. But he would like scream at them mm-hmm. while they were playing tennis. While they were playing? That's mm-hmm. not the time to scream at them. No. But you know? they, they, got, they got him. <laughs> they yeah. showed him. They got the last laugh. They showed him what was you were saying, doctor. Oh, uh, no. Did you, have uh, you just, ever met the Mend- uh, Menendez? I wish, but no, I have not uh, met them. No. Why do you wish? Uh, uh, that's a good question. You know what? I'm just famous t- people of any sort are I'm interesting. Gonna try, I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to say I'm glad I've never met them because okay. they would scare me. But they're, you know what? It's interesting to watch their stories on TV. You mm-hmm. know, we're fascinated by dark things like serial killers or these sort of family murders. We're fascinated by... Dark things by death, which is kind of what Search Party is kind of mm-hmm. feel like. Search mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. interesting, and there's November a lot. 21st. I, I can't wait to see that. By the way, uh, it's got a big twist ending. I've heard that he told me during the break. Well, and, and I wanted to mention another thing that you guys were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. which was that uh, Michael hoped to live to the age of sixty-eight, and fingers crossed, we all do. But there's no guarantees. Not in this world. Not with the tectonic plates beneath us shifting at every single instant. At any moment, the big one could happen, and we could all be swallowed up in a giant chasm. Wow. Is that what's going to happen in a big earthquake? You see these yes, movies will. like Earthquake where just I was giant... going to address the movie Earthquake. You were? Yes, from the Tell 1970s us about it. with Charlton Heston. Yes. It is... It is as close to a documentary as we know of about what will actually happen when there's an earthquake. Other than Charlton Heston, because he's passed away. He's passed away, and George Kennedy is not with us uh, either. Uh, But every other person in that movie, though, will be with us. We'll have an analog in real life. If it's not (laughs) that that actual actor, it will be someone who is just like there will be a motorcycle daredevil wearing a yellow and black leather suit. Who's the George Kennedy of today? Who's the analog to George Kennedy? I I wish I know. Remember when actors, like 50-year-old actors could be popular, you know, like in every Uh, show had just like a 50 or a 60-year-old white-haired guy? Ernest Borgnine, Martin Balsam. Mm Mm-hmm. Other guys. <laughs> many, many, many other guys mm-hmm. forgotten. Great character actors, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, George Kennedy was a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. 
But you were asking, will that will it happen just like it looked like in the movie? Yes. People falling into cracks in falling the earth. into big wide cracks in the earth. Absolutely, hmm. absolutely. Which is why I have, and I'm I'm so happy you had me here on your show. I'm happy to have you. Uh, I have uh, some things that everyone should have in the earthquake preparedness kit that I'd like to mention because uh, you know I I don't know if people get. You know, prepare for these things until it might be too late. Well, that's something that that I was reading a little bit uh, on earthquakes in preparation of your appearance. Yeah, and great. everyone Thank is God. supposed to have an earthquake preparedness kit. Absolutely. Do you have one, Michael? You've lived here two years now. Uh, no. Okay, you got to have one. And and uh, well, Doctor Blouse, yeah. you're here to tell us what to put in these. Absolutely. And okay. let's start with what you were talking about right there. Will the Earth just split in half? And a big, wide crack will happen, and people just be falling over the edges into the ground. So, and sort of some of them will be at the precipice going, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, 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 we, don't whoa. Know, we don't know if they're going forward. We don't know if they're going backward. They're grabbing. They're clutching with their hands and right on the And some are sort of waving at the, ar- at the in the air, like, is there anything I can grab onto yep. in the air anywhere, a tree branch exactly. or anything? Exactly. And a kid's got his dog, and his dog just went over, and he lets it go, thank God. God, because if he would have held onto the leash, he would have gone over as well. Or, yeah, or I guess if it's a light dog, he would have saved the dog if he hadn't let it go. If he had that upper body strength, yeah. yeah we don't know a, how old of a child this was that we were talking that's about. That's true. And a dog, roughly a small dog is 20, 25 pounds oh, yeah, in that area. So some children are not able to uh, have the uh, upper body strength to yep. carry 25 pounds. Parents, get your kids a small dog because of earthquakes. And a weight grow, bench. And a weight bench as well. As they grow and as they get stronger, you can up the size of the dog, okay? That's not in my earthquake preparedness kit, but it is just a sensible tip for everybody. Uh, number one on the list. With a bullet. Though, with a bullet. Absolutely. Accompanying a bullet. Number one with a bullet on the earthquake preparedness kit. A big old 10, 12-foot pair of stilts, okay? Because when that earth starts splitting open, you're not going to be able to bridge that gap unless you're on ah. a big, tall pair of stilts and you can just do the splits Right across the thing, and <laughs> and you'll be able to hold that pose, and eventually sort of cantilever yourself over to one side or the other. Okay, okay, interesting. You, you're gonna need a set of stilts. When do you put on the stilts? Is it when you hear the first rumble, or do you first wear- rumble? You hear first Start rumble. putting them on. Start putting them on. It might just. It, it, you know, it might just be your your tummy growling or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and you can remember this. Here's a tip that I learned. You can remember to put on the stilts yeah. because rumble, first rumble, rumble in the Bronx. Yes. What's a famous song about New York? New York, New York. Mm-hmm. Start And so you can sing to yourself, start putting them on. Mm-hmm. And that's a good way to remember to do it. That's a great cue. I never. That's a great mnemonic device. Start putting them on. Start putting them on. And then you can write the rest. Earthquake is so right you here. Go, wait, how do you get from earthquake to the Bronx? Rumble. Rumble. Rumble in the Bronx is a sorry, movie. Starring I see. Jackie Chan. I see. <laughs> sure. I see. Rumble. Rumble in the Bronx. Bronx. The Bronx is in Bronx, New York. New York. New York. New York. New York. New York is a famous song, song. about New York. Sing the song with but different change lyrics. The lyrics. Write new Sing lyrics. Sing the song, but change the lyrics. Please, and everybody. that will make if you I can, remember if, to put yes, stuff if I can, If I can get one thing in everybody's head, please write the, rewrite the lyrics to New York. New because York. it's not going to work without the, it. It's not going to work, and you're going to forget. Because if, forget. It, if you don't rewrite the lyrics, you'll hear the first rumble, should and you'll start be, spreading news. Right? Should it be start, uh, start putting your stilts on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's a great Because you said, start putting them on. And it could be that's anything. Should it be, start be putting, putting your stilts on? Uh, that's yes. better. It doesn't exactly fit, fit the meter. The start yeah. put, st- <clears throat> start, <clears throat> a little start, lower. no, a little lower. St- start putting on stilts. That's better. That's start better. That fits the meter. Stilts. Oh. It's quaking right now. But you don't need that part. Okay, you're right. No, you don't. Right? You don't. You don't but need if you want to hum something to yourself as sure. you're putting them on, yes, you probably soothe, need more lyrics. To soothe and but calm yourself. Down. To soothe and calm yourself down. Yes. I'm leaving today. I think you could just keep going with the song. I'm going to be That's a interesting. Part of then you it. could just sing the good song. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Anyway, I don't know. That's I don't. True. It seems like. Now, fr- I don't a know lot who, of way, different ways you could I don't do know it. who wrote, because Frank Sinatra didn't write all his own songs, I don't think. No, I know but Paul Anka it? did the English translation of My Way. I think uh-huh. it was uh, uh, Carol Bayer Sager. 
Carol Bay. Oh, yes. I think that's in the musical based on her life, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting that Mm -hmm. she would write lyrics to a song that were so easily adaptable to an earthquake emergency song. You change the first line and the rest of it works perfectly. (laughs) Very Mm -hmm. interesting and forward thinking. Okay, well, this is great. Now, how, uh, you know, when I think of an earthquake preparedness kit, I think of something a little small that I could put right. in the trunk of my car, perhaps. Sure. Ten foot stilts. That's you know I, I'm going to have to buy a pickup truck. You can strap them on strap them on the top of your car. You can get retractable ones. You can get expensive uh, uh, carbon fiber retractable. Are these like Inspector folding. Gadget type things? Where it's I think so. I think they are. Yeah. I think they're like Inspector Gadget stilts. Yeah. Uh, yes, but what, what brand do you own? Oh, I, <laughs> we make our own. Uh, up at university. Oh, so the scientists make your you make well, your own stilts. I'm not an expert in that, but we do have uh, someone else on our team who who crafts his own stilts. So, um, but I've heard Under Armour does very, makes really good really? stilts. Is that true? Okay, that's good to know. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't mention earlier, but yeah, I'm up at the uh, University of California at Santa Claus. And S- did you say Cruz? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know that school. University. Uh, of California, Nor- Santa Claus. It's in NorCal. Uh, it's NorCal. Very it's up, north. It's, by, it's near Obispo. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've got one of the top, one of the top uh, seismology teams. When I hear uh, something anywhere. like that that's so crazy, the only thing I can do is just say, but anyway, and move right, on. Because right. it's so nuts. Well, I can't what, even can process I say, it. Can I say what's crazy about it? Wait, sure. Are we talking about what he where he said he works? Yes. It sounds... It's funny to me that this – because there's there's all these – Santa Clarita and Santa mm-hmm. Monica and stuff, San, Santa Barbara. A lot of saints because the saints, Santa Santa Cruz. Santa Maria. Yep. Right. Santa Barbara. You said Santa Barbara. Well, it's funny because his is Santa Claus, which is like Santa Claus from mm-hmm. Christmas. Right. Chris Kringle. Right. Mm-hmm. But this is just named after the town in which the university exists. How do you spell uh, Claus? Uh, C-L-A-U-S. Spelled. Oh, Klaus. normal spelling, Klaus. Yeah, Klaus. Yeah, yeah like Klaus. Chris, uh, Christmas Kringle. Mm-hmm. Was Chris sh- short for Christmas? I don't know. I don't know either. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll check on that during Let's the break. Check on that. Yeah, and so, then there's Nick. Nick. Yeah, there's Chris and there's Nick. Saint, Old Saint Nick. Saint it's like, Nicholas. hey, Santa Claus, Saint Nick. Like, w- Nick, stick to one. There's Nick. There's Claus. Who's Claus? Klaus. 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 So and there's Nicholas. Klaus. Saint Nick, Nick is Nicholas. There's Chris, Klaus, and Nick. It's not adding up. Hmm. You know, if I were an like, uh, uh, investigator of a crime, I would just kind of shake my head and go, not adding this up. This doesn't add up. This, this Something's fishy it in doesn't, Denmark. It's not <laughs> passing the smell test. <laughs> so now, you uh, continue, Dr. Blouse. Right. Well, you were talking about— How is about- that spelled? <clears throat> is that spelled the same as Klaus? Yeah. Surprisingly, no. B-L-O-U-S-E, Blouse. Mm. Standard spelling. Yep. Mm-hmm. So— uh, are there things in this kit that are uh, small or something that you could put in the trunk of your car? Absolutely. You're going to want to carry with you, I say, $10 and quarters at all times. $10 and quarters? 20 if you can afford it. Or, or more if you can. 25 would be even better than that. Because when the big one comes down and the entire uh, United States society is thrown into disarray, okay, Boom down go all the cell phone towers. You're not going to be able to use your cell phone. You're not going to be able to communicate. You're going to need to use pay phones, and you're going to need to use a lot of quarters. Now, where are you going to find a pay phone? You probably, you probably don't use them very often. That's why you need to go online. Go to whatever state you're in, California, the, the telephone company or California Bell, I assume. Print out, computer printout sheets of every payphone in the state or in your area, wherever you're going to need it. So that's another thing that goes in your kit. It doesn't have to be color printout, does it? Because no, black and white. Black, black and white's, and white's okay. okay. Black okay. and white's great. great and that's great. A, that was a great tip. That was a great tip. Mm-hmm. Uh, With directions to the payphones as well, like a MapQuest-style directions from... If you need directions, if you're good handling a map... Uh, as I am, I'm, I'm not going to need directions. I'm not the greatest cartographer, so I would prefer like turn by turn directions. Yeah. If that helps you out, absolutely, that's a great idea for you. Uh, and these, this is the conversation we should be having ahead of time, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to be 
boom, you hear the rumble, you start, what's the song again? Okay, uh, start putting put on, on stilts. stilts. You put your stilts on. You're trying to, you're trying to climb out of your apartment, your house, wherever. Mm-hmm. And now you're thinking, oh my God, I don't have directions to the nearest payphone. I better go start printing them out. It's too late. Well, it's also, too late. also, you can't use a payphone on stilts. You can't get to the, fo- to the phone. Right. You're going to have to crawl up. Uh, you would have to lie down, fall down on your stilts. Like crawl, fall backwards on, on your stilts? But even then, even if you're on the ground, you couldn't use the payphone. You could if – you you can. There's, there's two oh, things. you can? Well, you could if you were lying down on the ground and you were crawling forward. And then as you reached the phone, you crawled your way up. You would ultimately be at sort, sort of, of a 17-degree like angle. Degree angle. <laughs> Like, so you're on stilts balancing at a 17-degree angle. <laughs> exactly. So from the top of your head to the bottom of the stilts is probably, let's say, six-foot person, 12 foot so about 18 feet. Mm-hmm. The payphone is at a height of about four feet. So mm-hmm. uh, so you're making a triangle, essentially, wow. that is four foot by 18 foot. Uh, somebody out there do the math. All, I don't know what the all of the angles need, add up to well, 360 degrees. You need a ton of core like strength. You need a co- ton of core strength yes, you do. to do, be able to do you that. You absolutely do. And hopefully when, you're, when your parents were preparing you with bigger and bigger dogs and working on your weight training, you were working on your core strength so as well. So it's all of a piece. going to be a difficult. It's all of a piece. Absolutely. Don't just absolutely. build up the muscles because that's just part of physical fitness. Absolutely. Right. It is work going, on the core. Well, that, oh, they all, well they'll say if you, if you overdo one part of your body, then if you're too bulked up on top and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you your legs are underdeveloped. You ever see one of those guys with the big, big muscles, but he's got a big, fat belly? And it's like, come on, let's uh, you know work mm-hmm. on the belly as well. Don't just like make the arms really big. You're talking about me? <laughs> come on. First of all, Come on, Scott. I wouldn't say you have giant big muscles of the, akin to the ones I'm talking about. I mean, those That's are big. True. Those That's are true. big, but I'm I'm talking. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, those are like I a mean, weightlifter. They're, they're big. Those are like a, a weightlifter yeah. who's been working for only five years. I'm talking right. a weightlifter You're that's been like working weird, for like ten weird, years weird minimum. Big. Weird yeah. big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are just beautiful. Okay. But so anyway, yes. Yeah. Core, but in, core but strength, anyway, okay. core strength. Core strength. Absolutely. Or. If you feel like you're safe enough, you can you can maybe take off the stilts long enough to make a, a phone call. Mm, but that I should be know. that should be a last ditch option. That should be the last thing that you, you don't want to be on that payphone and suddenly rumble, rumble, rumble. Whoa, 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 whoa. Aftershock it? City. What about? And I don't know the answer to this. I'm okay. new to the I'm new to Southern California. Are there any payphones that are at that height? Of stilts. Oh, or should they make payphones at that height well, in preparedness? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, there is one uh, at the University of California at Santa Claus because we've thought about this stuff. Uh, there's one that's only accessible if you're on There's stilts. a stilt height payphone. Exactly. There's Although, aren't payphone. you all going to be competing for access to that phone? We're, we're putting in a second one. Mm. But Well, also, I would assume on a sort of honor system, you would, would say make it, make it quick. Yeah, that's true. If you're going to do right. a phone Everyone call, keep make, it, make it keep quick. it under 90 seconds. Yeah, make that's your right. call, say what you you know, let whoever you need to know what's going on and then let other people. Exactly. And it's going to be it's going to be such a mad scramble because you're going this is the other thing. You're going to be trying to call another payphone that is nearby one of your loved ones because their cell phone is not working because all the tel- uh, the cell towers have been knocked out. So, right. you're so also going to need a roll of everywhere. In other words, if I'm calling in New York well, or, we don't or know. D.C. No, you're right. No, that's a good point. You could call, you could call and hopefully they're unaffected. Yes, and, and, and probably on that side of the country, you're, you're going to be fine. But when the big I, one but, hits, don't, I mean, don't you think it's just going to be like one big jagged line across the entire United States? Horizontally yeah. across yeah. the entire thing? It might be. We don't know. There is not a fault line. There's not a fault line that goes in mm-hmm. that direction as far as we know. But it still could happen. But I think if you, if, if you have a pie— all right, uh, uh, typical pie. What's your favorite pie, Michael? Oh, uh, pecan pie. Pecan pie. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, something though, maybe with more of a crust uh, on it instead. Pum- of, pumpkin pie. A pumpkin pie is. Wait, there's no crust. No, there's no. There's no, crust. no that's, 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 that's underneath. I mean, opposite. a crust on top. Yeah. Uh, Not cheese, just cheese. Uh, uh, apple pie. 
Great, great example, great example. Now, when you're looking at an apple pie yeah. and an entire section of that top crust crumbles and right. sinks into the apples, yeah. the rest of it is not structurally sound enough no. to stay up there. The That's structural what's integrity has been I compromised. I see what you're saying. That's going to happen to the entire, United States. That entire <sighs> pie crust is just going to fall off the side. Like Which that. sometimes that's delicious to mix it up with the oh, apples yeah. like that. I really enjoy mm-hmm. that. Also, put a slice of cheese on that oh, melted cheese. Man. Have really? you ever done that no, with with no. apple pie? It's no, delicious. I'll do a vanilla ice cream. I remember uh, mm-hmm. a, a slice of apple pie without the cheese is like a hug without a squeeze. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I've Who's, never heard who that. Who said that? The cheese manufacturers of America or something? Also, the squeeze makers. I like that. Uh, maybe they were in tandem. In conjunction with each other? Could, could be. That's my first time here. Could be. Yeah. Do you have anything else in this kit that needs to go in there? Uh, well, it's not fitting in your kit, but it is something to prepare for always because electricity may be knocked out, okay? Mm. And your refrigerator is going to be down, and you're not going to have access to refrigerated food for very long, mm-hmm. especially that stuff in your freezer. So I always pack uh, pack some extra ice cream because first thing, boom, uh, that uh, electricity has gone. You're going to want to start eating that ice you cream now because it's going to go – Bad. Now, the the other ones you've got there are probably going to melt, and then you can use that on your cereal. Uh, you can use it in place of milk. It's going to be a little bit sweeter, but it is. It's going to double as right, right. as your post earthquake milk uh, in that in that situation. Okay, great. Um, other things. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, it seems like if you were appearing on a show like this. You wouldn't have to you think just, about you it. Just you would just know. Yeah, I didn't just know how much time I was going to have, and I just wanted to make we sure have we got all the time so in the world. Stilts, oh, thank God. He thank said God. stilts, quarters, quarters, ice cream, ice cream. and then what else? <laughs> and then you have to think. I mean, what about water? What about water? <laughs> you would, know that you, stuff the you, surfers surf would on? Would you want some of that? Of course. Of course you're going to need to drink water. You're going to be very thirsty. <laughs> you're going to be extremely thirsty. Yeah. I'm not debating that. Okay, okay. we don't need to relitigate this at all, but people are going to drink water. Have a bottle of water. Always have a bottle of water. Have one in your car. That's another thing, though, I, that I didn't point out, though. Gas is going to get very so expensive. You, so how do you fast. get in the car? Because, again, I'm just stuck on this stilts part. You're wearing stilts. Right. How do you right. operate the levers and the uh, gas You know pedals? what? I, I, you don't need to answer that. I want to answer that. Okay. You once once you get up to your car. Because the thing is getting in the way of a lot of your other things that you need. You would think that. You would think that. But here's a car. Your car is going to be able to go fast enough that it's going to be able to beat how, uh, however fast that earth is cracking and splitting open. If you're flooring it, and if you're going fast enough, you're going to be able to beat that mm-hmm. that crater that's forming. Okay. So It's like running away from an explosion. Question. If you run fast if enough, you, fast you can enough. always outrun that's an That's a smart explosion. question. So... Strap the stilts to the top of the car and then I see. floor it. Now, I see. that's if you have a car. Now, here, here's the thing, though. Gas is going to get expensive very quickly. Okay. Because and it's, you're going to end up in a Mad Max kind of a, a situation. Uh, Where that's the biggest currency. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a gas currency. So uh, I recommend, and this isn't required, but I recommend that you have a motorcycle. You're going to want to have a motorcycle because it can go just as fast, but it doesn't take as much gas, and you're not going to uh, you're not going to run out of money as fast, and it, especially if your money is all in quarters. Okay, and also as you'll, you'll save is. on tires as well. It's only it's half as many tires. Half as many tires. So if you ever have a blowout, you're yeah. half as likely to have a blowout on a motorcycle. And if you have to, you can drive on that one tire, and you can I've, just pop a wheelie. Pop a wheelie or put it in the front and just drag or in the back. Or do some donuts. <laughs> do, do donuts and use, that's right, centrifugal force will keep you, keep that other end of it, uh, you know, up off the ground. Also, right. mind you, you're going to be dragging your stilts behind you on the motorcycle. Right. So Almost like a water ski type of situation. That's right. Yeah. And you can, you can in fact, use them as water skis for one of your neighbors if they don't have a motorcycle or if they've run out of money uh, and they've run out of gas or if car. at a certain point after the earthquake you want to go on a nice vacation go right. out go out to the lake yep use your stil- stilts as water skis right and i hope you have a boat because a gas is going to it's very expensive mm-hmm. uh, but uh, does the do boats work on the same ga- they work on the same gasoline you don't need special boat gas do you 
I don't see That's an interesting question. Do you need boat gas? I've never seen a, uh, like a, a gas station on the corner that yeah. advertising boat gas. Right. So I would imagine <laughs> you don't. It's probably the same. I never, I never really thought. I never owned a boat and I never thought about it. And I, like I, boat I gas, $5 <laughs> a gallon. I've right. never seen that. Right. So, Well, and believe you me, riding around in a boat is the last thing I'm going to be thinking about after the big one hits. So mm. uh, I haven't even considered that. The water skiing vacation scenario, that's something new to me in time. So. <laughs> Well, these are great tips. I I yes. thank you so much. I mean, tips, we have and they're just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and sometimes, if I'm seasick and I eat, eat something in the food, then I get boat gas. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot like Louis C.K. You're murdering oh, right now. Oh, <laughs> stop! <laughs> anyway, uh, you can find you can read about everything else I have in my earthquake preparedness uh, preparedness kit. Sorry. Uh, online uh, you at our website? website. Yeah. Okay. What's the website? It, it's just a website for the seismology department at the University of California at Santa Claus. Okay. Uh, Great. Easy enough. Just Google all of that information. Google all of that, and we will have uh, an entire kit up there with everything that you need. Maybe like in quotes, just the tip of the iceberg. In quotes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Great. Exactly. Just so you really know that, that that you know, I hate it when you Google something and thousands of web pages come up. I, I just want one. There's too many. Yeah. There mm-hmm. should be a there should be a Google, and this isn't my field, but there should be a Google where you type it in and they only give you one. <laughs> they give you the best one. They give you the best one, and they don't they don't muddle it's like, it up. Take with it or leave it, options. and choke on it. It's the it's the uh, the paralysis of too many choices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know this is not your field, but I it's appreciate you talking yeah. about this. All right, well, uh, we need to take a break. When we come back, we have another expert. This is fast. What a fascinating show! We're learning about entertainment and science, and we have an expert in another field. Uh, so we'll be right back with more comedy. Bang bang. <laughs> guess who got new glasses? Did you guess? Did you guess me? Any other answer is probably incorrect because no one got new glasses but me. But yes, I got new glasses and guess, why am I making you guess so many things? I'm so sorry. But guess where I got them. Yes, I got them at Warby Parker. Of course I did. A new concept in eyewear. Contemporary eyeglass, says, maybe, or eyeglass, that are extremely affordable and fashion Forward! Glasses should be viewed as a fashion accessory, but they should not cost as much as a plane ticket or a new iPhone. Warby Parker's glasses start at $95, and that is including prescription lenses. And sunglasses start at $95, including polarized lenses, available with prescriptions starting at $175. Warby Parker believes glasses should be viewed as a fashion accessory, just, you know, like a bag, a shoe, a shoe, not a pair of shoes, a shoe, a necktie, a hat, not a pair of hats, a hat. Warby Parker makes it easy and affordable to accessorize with glasses. And for every pair sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need. Warby Parker makes you you blind. No, they make you see. (laughs) Warby Parker makes buying glasses online easy and risk-free. What does that even mean? Online, easy, risk-free? Three things I don't know what that means. Yes, what I'm talking about is their home try-on program. What you do, you order five pairs of glasses. They're shipped directly to your door where you can try them on in the comfort of your home. And I hope, sincerely, your home is comfortable. You can show them to friends, family, colleagues, the mailman, anyone whose opinion you care about. Let them know what you think. Try the frames on for five days before sending them back using a free prepaid return shipping label with no obligation to purchase. It's 100% free and so easy Anyone can do it. I did it. I tried on five pairs of glasses, four of them. They said, "Uh uh-uh, no, take those off. But the fifth, oh, they loved them. Head to warbyparker.com slash bangbang to see my current favorite frames and get started with your free home try-on today. Choose the five frames you would like to try on, mail the frames back, choose your favorite pair or pairs to have your RX added to and order. Warby Parker makes your experience completely risk-free and free shipping all around. Visit warbyparker.com slash bangbang to begin your free home try-on experience today. 
<laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. We have Michael Showalter uh, of uh, Search Party on TBS, November 21st. Every episode. Uh, watch them one at a time, though. Don't watch them all at the same time. Don't get 10 TVs in your house and put every episode no. on at the same time. No, no, no. You'll that have won't. no idea what's going you have on. no idea. What That's an insane thing to expect yes. of people yes. to do. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, It's not like a uh, Flaming Lips Zyurica situation, you right. know, where, yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Brian Blouse here uh, of the se- seismology department at the University of California, Santa Claus. Yes, as uh, well as the seismography department, as well as the defunct department of seismology. Mm-hmm. What, what happened to the offices uh, of that department? Are they getting reused by other departments at the school, or are they just you know all boarded up in cobwebs? Yeah, they, I think there's a, a little dance club is in there now. Not, mm-hmm. not a, a, a a student club about dance. Not a not a uh, discotheque. Not a discotheque. I didn't mean a discotheque. Okay, okay. Um, well, let's get to our next expert. Uh, he's a an expert. Oh, this is interesting. We were talking about murdering. Uh, in our last segment, and uh, our next guest is an expert uh, of crime scenes, a crime scene expert. Uh, please welcome Mark. Hello, Mark. Uh, hi, and I'm not exactly a crime scene like expert, but I'm uh, cleaning them up. You, you're not a crime scene expert. You no, t- I mean I don't. I'm not a guy that like, I don't work for the state, and I don't have any science. You guys talk about science a lot. I'm not a science. Person, I just um, I'm the guy that when the you know if there's a big old mess, I'm gonna come, I'll clean it up. It's like when I get to work, it's like if you know if someone had a barbecue and then someone has a client clean up after the barbecue party. Except every time I go, it's like if the barbecue was murder a bar murder barbecue. I, I, I understand the concept of cleaning up things. I don't think you have to liken it to a barbecue okay. in order to make me understand. Okay, it. when I go to work, like. It's hard sometimes, like, I don't have a locker, so I have to think, like, where am I going to put my stuff? But a lot of times I'll use the person's dishwasher because usually if the dishwasher wasn't open during the murders, then it's clean in there, and I'll put my stuff in there, like my locker. Uh, before we get to the how, – how often are – the dishwasher's open during no, the Almost murder. never. That's what, be, that's what I learned to rely on the dishwasher to be a locker for myself. You ever get to a crime scene and you're like, uh oh, left the dishwasher. This murder happened it while did, they were washing it dishes. Did, it did happen one time, and then I leave all my stuff in my car, and it got hot, and yeah. I was upset. What about the refrigerator? Um, well, then a lot of times the food in there went bad, so I don't want to put my stuff in this with the stuff that does the bad food. Why would the food go bad? Because by the time I get in there, it's been a while. Because then, like, you got the crime scene scientist guys, and then they got a while. They just got to wait. Food can stay cold in a refrigerator for also. Do they unplug weeks. the refrigerator on a, at a crime scene? Do they? Yeah. Most people don't know. The first thing that happens is is the is the state turns off the power. Oh, the, the crime state. Scene. And then the ice, state, the ice, the the ice cream is going to start melting. Is that what you melting. said? The state <laughs> turns yes. off the. <laughs> yes, that's the state protocol. Is they turn off the power and utilities at a crime scene. That ice cream's going to melt almost instantaneously. See, right? you, can, you can use it as milk on your cereal. That's an overlap. Um, well, that's interesting. So you're not okay. an expert at all, but you're an expert in cleaning things up. I guess that's why my producer listed you as an expert. Yeah, but it's a great equalizer because when I go in and clean up, it's like this is just the inside of bodies. Like you don't know, like with these white people. Or not? <laughs> What's that? I see. I think he's saying that on the inside we're all the same. We're all right? the same. I we see. all. We all. It's the the Shylock. You know. Uh, sure. If you prick me, do I? Do not I bleed? not bleed? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. We're all blood and semen and bile. And, right. You semen. know. Uh, all. I mean, uh, half of us have semen. I guess. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of it. Like you think. Like what about oh. the what about the castrated? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Forty nine percent of People in the well, I guess women are fifty-two percent of the earth at this point. So we're forty-seven percent of the people have semen inside their bodies when they die. I guess. Yeah. Is that? I mean, you're the expert. I don't know. Yeah, it's to me. It's all just. It's all just on the floor, and so I'll pick it up. You know, the great thing about my job is most time people leave me alone so I can sing if I want. Or like sometimes I'll put like my gloves in the in the blood and I'll, you know, like just having fun. And I'll put, put my hand, bloody hands in the air and be like, ha, 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 ha. and then I, I'll laugh because that's funny. But then a separate laugh other than the moo-hoo-ha-ha. Yeah, like a real laugh. Like a real chuckle. And then that's fun. And then. 
you know, but then if every once in a while the neighbor will come over and be like, hey, what happened over here? What happened? And then I'll have fun. Like, I'll be like, oh, it's the mob. But I don't know. You're, it's I not your know. job to figure out who did it and, or and, who done and it. And so you're looking to have fun. Like, you're looking to yeah. have fun with it. Well, I think that's the key to a happy life is have fun at work. So I try to do that. You know, so I'll say it's the mob or whatever. But I know it's probably, I mean, I'll know that I don't know. Usually it's just the spouse. You know, that's a, if someone knows about that stuff, that's what they would say. And then also, I would sometimes be like, you know, I heard Anne Hathaway is involved, even <laughs> though she probably wasn't. She's probably a million I'll miles away. Say that because why do people pick on her? Uh, America has really targeted her. Well, they used to have a love affair with her, you know, back during the Princess Diaries, and right. and and then somehow people. I think it was the Oscars. I think that the, yeah. something her about hosting her performance. The at the, yeah, her. Uh, uh, the perf- yeah. yeah, there was something about her at the Oscars that rub people the just wrong trying way. too hard mm-hmm. you know do, do you agree mm-hmm. yeah when Mark? I used to say that before the Oscars people were like no way and then I say after the Oscars people were like that makes sense and then I'll say Jennifer Lawrence is a witness and she's like not involved and they're like that's also my perception of that person is that she's being helpful to the investigation so it's, it plays into people's preconceptions of these celebrities yeah. totally totally Totally. Well, that's that's great. So, how uh, how many days a, w- a week do you work? I mean, I don't know how many murders take place. Uh, we, we heard something about Chicago recently has what, like eight hundred murders uh, right. a Too day many. or something? Yeah. Too many. Yeah. yeah. How many murders are there in the? You work here in Los Angeles? Yeah, Los Angeles and outside of Los Angeles. You know, wherever it makes sense to drive. You know. Uh huh. So, say you get a call and it's like, hey. This is uh, the mayor of Rhode Island. We have a murder. Do you feel like coming out here? Does that make sense? At that point, I'm not even considering that. I'm like, Anaheim is the farthest I'm going to go personally is Anaheim. So not even Mission Viejo or Irvine? No way. One time, it's so funny, this guy is like, I'm the mayor of San Juan Capistrano, and I would like you to come personally and call you. And I'm like, I don't care. And then I didn't go. (laughs) Right. Well, hopefully someone went. I, would I hate to think there's so. a crime scene in San Juan Capistrano out there that's not cleaned up at this point. I hope so, but, you know. Have you ever been up to Santa Claus? No, that's too far. It's NorCal. Yeah, it's, it's too far north. Far. It's too far north. You know, you know, I got to take care of me. It's like I always say, like, I go to Denny's, but I, I don't deserve Denny's. You know what I mean? Like You always say that? Yeah. It's like. Like I clean, I go clean up crime scenes, but I don't deserve this. Uh, but I do it, but I don't deserve it. You know, you don't deserve meaning you don't deserve to be murdered. Oh, or you, you don't. mean Denny's is bad? It's not the greatest. But I see. It's In what your I can analogy, afford. Denny's is a bad thing. It's not. It's I what I can afford. So it's like what you do is not always what you are, what you deserve. So it's, you mean you deserve better than Denny's? I, that's like exactly what I mean. Because I love Denny's. Uh, yeah, what do you oh. order at Denny's, Michael? Oh, I'll do oh. the uh, the the, uh, the turkey bird, the bird. Uh, turkey bird. This, the, it's got bird in the title. Birds over my birdie. Well, there's m- moon over m- moon. My, my birdie? Yeah. My, Something with bird in it. Okay. Moon's and, over my yeah. hammy. Well, is, that, is, and, is moon's over my hammy, is that at Denny's? That is definitely at Denny's, I believe. I think, so. I think it is. And Dr. Blouse, what do you order at Denny's? Oh, dry toast. Just... Ugh, keep it. My stomach is usually. I'm. I'm always on edge. So your stomach is shaky, like the earth sometimes uh, is. I'm just jittery, and I just want uh, a water and a dry toast. A big stack. A you big know, stack. How many? How many slices? Like, like eight. Eight slices cut in triangles, so sixteen triangles. <laughs> it's funny. You and these aren't water. like stilt triangles at seventeen degree angles. These are like no, but but a I perf- always a, a ninety forty five and forty five. But I do see in triangles, so maybe that maybe that subconsciously maybe that's something I'm thinking about. I'm mm-hmm. always I'm always seeing in the geometry like that. Okay, great. Great. If you go to Denny's and you say you want water and toast to the waitress, they're going to charge you. But if you if you go, and I find that if you surprise people, you can get free stuff. Like, How do you if, mean? for instance, like if you go to not the in the say go Starbucks and you go not to cashier, but you go to the guy making drinks and he's like, "Can I have some hot water?" And they're like, "Sure, I'll give it to you." And then the last second, raises his hand to you, "Hey, can you throw in some whipped cream?" 
they're going to give it to you. Sure, why not? Because at this point, they just want you to leave. They just want you to go. But if you go to the cashiers, they can have hot water whipped cream, and they're going to charge you. Right. Why do you want whipped but cream? But then you just have your, yeah, hot water whipped cream? Water. Well, it's better than just water. That's true. I guess it's a lot like you know uh, melted ice cream over your cereal. You know what I mean? That's a good point. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think they're ghosts, but... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the, uh, any kind of segue into that. But, uh, I'm just talking about my work. Oh, okay. You don't, don't think there's ghosts? But if they are, and then the common thing everyone thinks they haunt the place they died, then why wouldn't everybody just go to a fancy party and commit suicide? Because now you've got a gray house to hang on in for a long forever. <laughs> I see. I see your logic. So you're looking, right. to, you're angling for a good place to hang out in. Because that's forever. And so everyone's always worried about what am I going to do this week? What am I going to do this week? But if really, if that's what's going to happen forever, then just go to p- mansion party. Just get it over with and do it, get there. And just get to the great, to get a, a fun house to be in forever. I would worry, though, that. If I did that, that the owners of the mansion wouldn't renovate it on a schedule of like every 10 years. I think you want to renovate oh. your house every 10 years or so or else it starts to look dated. I would worry that it would be like one of those old houses that has the same owner for 50 years and you go in there and it's like, oh, my God, this is like a time capsule. Like uh, 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 Elvis Presley's house. Exactly. Like yeah. Graceland. Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. the mm-hmm. most egregious example oh. of what I was talking about. Yeah. It's like update oh. this thing, you update know, this thing. put in some stainless it's steel like appliances. It's like in a time capsule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you go there, it's like you're back in a time capsule. Yeah. Solution yeah. to that is doing someone who has a timeless taste. Go to Hearst Castle. Hearst Castle. Right. That's up my way. Timeless, right? It's up right up near Santa Claus. <laughs> Have a timeless taste. You, this is really some mid-century, you know, furniture yeah. that's not going to be dated, you know, because mid-century kind of always is in style. Maybe mm-hmm. really, where am I going to be a ghost? The last decision you ever have to make. Yeah, I mean, don't do it in a hospital. Can you imagine having oh, to hang out in a hospital? Oh, God, it's so depressing. Oh, and then you get, always get ghost infections and picking up stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. People coughing on you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for your theory on ghosts. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Um, when I'm at work, there's, uh, you know, I'm cleaning up blood and different things, but I don't ever get to see body parts. People are like, do you get to see body parts? Have like, they dragged the bodies away by the time you get there? There's always, because that's evidence. Right. So people are like, do you ever, like, oh, you got to clean up a thumb? And I'm like, that's evidence. So no. Right. Thumb is always evidence. That thumb would be evidence. But sometimes what's inside the thumb, blood. Yeah, so anything that fell out of the thumb, I will clean up, but not the thumb. Right. So sometimes bone? Uh, Fragments, bone fragments. Mm -hmm. Skull fragments? That's just a bone. That's a head bone. Yeah, no, I know. So we're talking about the same thing. I'm building on what you're saying. I'm not. I, I'm not trying to contradict what you're saying. I'm trying to, you know, sort of build upon it. And no, I know, but it's sort of like if I said, a, you know, like a tree, and then you were like, and also a tree branch, and I'll be like, yeah, but okay, yeah, I'm. Okay. Yeah, he's, I he's guess. He's like irritated at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's, 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 I mean, I don't mean to speak for you, but he That's seems fine. he seems irritated. Yeah, at you fine. turned on a dime <laughs> against fine. me. He's, it's, he's well, I don't want to feel like. I don't want to be feeling like somebody's clowning me and stuff. Oh, okay. wow. I did. That's not wow. my intention at all. I mean, wow. Dr. Dr. Blouse, you saw this. I, I was an objective observer, and he he wasn't clowning you one bit. So, okay. So don't worry about it. I had a question for you, though. I had a question uh, for you. Okay. Though. Working here in Los Angeles, have did, did you ever uh, clean up after a famous murder? Ooh, possibly. But you don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of places that I'm like, whoa, this house, somebody live here has some money and stuff. I'd like to commit suicide in this house. Right. Mm. That's what I'm thinking about. But like they just give me an address and say clean it up. Mm-hmm. And then I don't watch the news a lot. And so I don't know. But you know, I don't care that I don't know because it's like life it's like where are you going? You're it's like you're a left turn lane, there's a big truck in front of you. I know I'm turning left, but I can't see in front of that truck. So I don't know. Also, if you've never been to the area that of town, that part of town, you just you have turn by turn directions, presumably to a telephone or something like right. that. 
uh, you don't know where you're going either. You, you're not able to visualize exactly where you're arriving to. Right. But you know you're going to get there. But it would, if you ask As me, long as you don't go halfway. Yeah. When people visualize things, they visualize, you know, what their was in their head. So I, you say visualize something, my head is filled with gruesome images. You know, so are, when you mm-hmm. so when someone says, "Hey, I live at," and they say some part of town that you don't know, like you know, uh, Mission Viejo or something, yeah. someplace you haven't been to, yeah. do you visualize their house as like a, just a giant pile of blood on the ground? Well, first, even before that, I will visualize the route as bloody footsteps, <laughs> right? Mm. And then once I arrive, I visualize a house built of of like frozen blood. Just blood, just built from frozen. So, so no, oh, I no see. drywall. Well, no, I see. Like a gingerbread house, I, I but see. like but blood. blood. Right. You can't, you can't build a house out of liquid blood. You no, physically impossible. You, you'd you have can. to freeze it like an igloo. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You got to make it. Like also, a do you snowman? Do, do you visualize house. front doors? You know, sort of uh, ajar and and kicked open. But I would imagine crime scenes mainly the front doors. The have front been. door is ajar. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like uh, the uh, uh, you know the entryway has been breached somehow. Uh, yeah. But you mean like you put jelly beans in it? Oh gosh, Michael! No, I mean that it is. I can see where the confusion lies here. There are two ways. You to- said. I'm just saying what you said to me. You I know. said the door is a jar. This, this is on me. I agree. This is on me. But I should have said it quicker. I said a jar. I should have said a jar. I say. You see what? Now where I the, see yeah, you get it. I'm it sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I know what you're talking about. Like 83 percent of the time, the door's broken or open, or you know, it's because the only reason it's not going to be is if the person knew the person that you know, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So here I am at a Home Depot trying to buy a door, and you just think and it's I'm, one of these things that's open and broken, right? And I'm like, I just want to clean up stuff and throw away stuff but every once in a while i gotta get into contracting and, and that oh. aspect <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, they're asking you to contracting fix the house sometimes you fix the houses after you've cleaned them up is that <laughs> sometimes <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> okay this is a brand new wrinkle <laughs> yeah i mean well you know there's certain floors that like you can't you can't clean that floor off that floor. You gotta. You have to refinish it. To it. Why is this on you though? The owner is hiring you to do this. Or? Yeah, I mean the state. The, the state, state the doesn't. State does the it. state doesn't care if his house is cleaned up. They want to shut up the utilities and move on. But the owner probably the owner needs a new tile job in the bathroom or something, <laughs> right? right? That's so the owner, so, and that falls to they you. They see and, someone on their hands and knees with, with the right. floor, and they that you're their first thought. And with right? the contracting stuff, that's just all you. You do that all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I figure it out. I mean, luckily there's the internet, and so what you guys clearly don't know is when you Google stuff, you were saying, "Oh, I wish there was this thing where you could just get one answer." There literally is. It's called mm-hmm. "I'm feeling lucky." Oh, there's a right. button. There's a button. Oh. Yeah. You either press search or you press. But that implies that's what that is. That implies chance. I mm. want the best one. I don't want just a random one. And I've never clicked okay. it because I, uh, I don't You're, feel lucky uh, ever. Uh, I f- do not feel lucky ever. Well, you think we're all going to die in an earthquake? I know we're all going to die in an earthquake. That's not luck. Uh. I'm s- if there's one thing I'm certain of, we're all going to die in a big, big goddamn earthquake. Mm. Ooh. I only ever click. I'm feeling lucky, and then I go with that. Mm-hmm. Because whatever pops up, yeah, whatever pops up, I just do that. Because then, even if I do the wrong thing, I'm saving time. What about these people who die in earthquakes? Who die in these big holes in the ground? Then they have to haunt what? The middle of the earth? The uh, center of the earth? You know? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's like I'm haunting a ditch. That sucks. I don't I know if. That. Yeah, I don't know if ghosts c- could uh, s- remain in their form near the Earth's core. It's so hot down there. Yeah. They w- it seems right. like they would just cook right up. Right. Also, I know ghosts can Evaporate. pass through things. Yeah. They're not oh, corporeal, yeah. but at a certain point, they need, you know, you're just passing through Earth all of the time. It's like mm-hmm. you're living in the center of the Earth, right? right. You need space. What about yeah. the guy that falls out of an airplane, has a heart attack halfway down? Now I'm haunting just like where there's a kite every once in a while. Yeah, yeah maybe That's a plane it. every once a in a plane, rare while passing through. Occasional parachutist or something. You can just say, boop. And planes are moving so. far too quickly to haunt. 
Right. It's like they're just passing through, so you know, like, at 300 know. miles an hour. It's like, boo, 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 you know, and they're totally. gone. Totally. So that guy's really that sucks. getting clowned. And not a lot of ghosts to hang out with up there either. You, you no. seem obsessed with getting clowned, by the way. Well, I don't want to get clowned. Like, okay. I don't want, <laughs> we're not clowning you. Can I, 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 I want to be that guy. I got, I got another question. It's been gnawing uh-huh. at It's just been gnawing at me, and I've been wanting to ask you. Okay. Yeah, you've been sitting there just tortured, it looks like. It's gnawing okay. away. It's gnawing away at me like a little, like a, like beaver. a beaver. Like a beaver. Beaver. Like a like a uh-huh. beaver. Like inside you're the me. dam, and this question is the beaver. Uh-huh. I'm a bunch of wood, and this question's the. Is beaver. it about gay people? <laughs> Just, no, I don't think that. It's no, bad. okay. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> well, because uh, you know when you go into a house, you don't know is this like a white guy's house, but you can usually tell if it was a gay guy's house. What? You could tell, like usually, like how can you tell? Like the plants are alive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, well, okay, all right, right. sure. Like, if it's a gay guy's house, they probably took care of the plants, but okay. all right, great. But that's what not, was your question? Guess, that's not the worst thing you could have said, I guess. <laughs> My question was just you've been, you're, you have been kind of ensconced with death for so long. Yeah. Now, do you somehow yeah. in the Los Angeles area, do you have a perverse fixation? On, what's your favorite murder that you've worked on? Well, you just asked me more than one question. Okay, right? yeah. So, first of all, that's like saying to a guy who works at Starbucks, like, whoa, are you just obsessed with coffee? That's your job. I assume they are. That's mm-hmm. your job. It could be, it could not. It could just be a paycheck. But also, what was the second question? What's, What's your favorite murder? Favorite, right? favorite, favorite, favorite murder. murder of all time? Um, I would say the one on uh, Harper between Santa Monica and Fountain. And why is that your favorite? Because um, it was so easy to clean up. It was oh. like... It was someone, like... Did someone scare someone to death or something? It was an early day for me. Well, if there's no residual residue and just like scared to death then I'm not gonna get called out to that oh okay so there has to be some stuff to clean up but this one was like it was the person died on an area rug mm. and then I just basically wrapped, hauled, up, wrapped, wrapped him up. it up yeah. no I don't do the body oh right right sorry you, but you wrapped up the rug I just wrapped, took out the rug and then it was like, wow. But then do you have to put in a new rug? Does the, do they hire, does the, the owner hire, hire you then? To- and in that case, they did. And they said, we, you know, I said, you want me to pick? And they're like, you pick. Doesn't that fall like, under, like, taste. doesn't interior that fall under decorator interior decorating? Some, it does. Sometimes <laughs> I'm interior decorating. And, do they, and, and where, did you, where do you go to get the rug? Well, I used to go to West Elm, but <laughs> their return policy is terrible. <laughs> And they'll say, have you ever noticed? They'll be like, uh, we're having a sale up to 70% off. It's but then never there, 70%. But there's one thing that's 70% it's off. It's always 10. And then there's almost nothing else is really a good sale. So I don't go to West Elm anymore. Yeah. So that was, I used to go to West Elm. And now it's like Craigslist mostly. <laughs> You're just getting rugs off Craigslist for these. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. everyone has their process. Yeah, well, but I only go places that are close by, you know. And I don't like to get tricked. Like, uh, I'm clown, not going. I'm like, no, not that either. But like, well, see, is there's a process. Like, if people try to trick you, and mm-hmm. if you fall for it, then you got clown. Oh, I see. So you don't like mm-hmm. someone attempting to trick you. And end up clowning you. <laughs> right. Got it. Right. Got it. So, like, people be like, oh, yeah, I'm selling a rug. And then you get the you get the feeling this is a store. This mm-hmm. is not a guy. Oh, yeah. He put it on I Craigslist, but it's but it's actually it a store. This is a merchant. This is like this a brick is like and mortar. Some, like, <laughs> Armenian store. Right. Got like it. Something, you know. Well, this is fascinating. Thank you so, so much for coming and sharing so much of your life with us. We, yeah. We're running out of time, but. Uh, oh. That's not a bad thing. That means we all get to leave. Uh, but okay. uh, but we do have one final thing here on the show uh, that we like to do, and it's a little something called plugs. Time to plug your stuff. Are you ready to tell us? Time to plug your stuff. Uh, yeah. Time to plug your stuff. Are you ready to tell us? Time to plug your stuff. Uh, no.
All right, that was Lightning Lane is just the greatest guy, and the only other one is Patrick by 2YE. Thank you so much for that plug submission. That was pretty good. Sounded like a, a, a popular song that maybe w- was just someone talking over it, an existing song? I can't tell, or because it's that professional. If it is something that a person produced, uh, well, well done, well done. All right, let's plug it up. Uh, Michael, what do we have? Obviously, Search Party, November 21st. Yep, Search Party, uh, November TBS. 21st. TBS. Uh, mystery comedy, Alia Shokat, John Early, John Reynolds, Meredith Hagner. Great show. And John Early, of course, we know from Wet Hot American Summer. Is that the first time you worked with him? And were you like, I got to get this guy in search party? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of John's. Yeah, very funny. Yes, very funny. Uh, great cast, great show, TBS. Uh, this Monday, the 21st, make sure you catch every single episode and you can, I mean, uh, try to watch them all by Thanksgiving, watch them all, watch them all by Thanksgiving, you know, and then you can like talk about it with your parents and stuff like that. And, yep. you know, it'll give you something to talk yeah, about in it, those awkward that's dinners. That's exactly the, the idea. You're home for Thanksgiving. Watch. You're looking party. for anything. You're just grasping at straws. Yes. At a certain point, you're going to be like, Hey, did you guys see that search party thing? Exactly. Boom. There's at least 10 minutes yep. of, of your every, life. Every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm saying every day of the holiday, you have that 10 minutes. You bring it up yep. every single day. Yep. And people go, no, we haven't watched it yet. I mean, you've been yeah, with yeah, us yeah, the entire yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, we'll yeah. get to it. We'll get yes, to it. Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Blouse, what do you yes. have to plug? Uh, and I didn't mention it before, but uh, I have my own line of uh, ice creams uh, out there. Oh. Uh, it's called Dr. Blouse's Earthquake Ice Cream. Uh, Do you have any with you here? I or? couldn't bring it for the drive down. It would have melted. Mm. Uh, and it's only in a couple of stores up near Santa Claus. Oh. Um, but hopefully we will be spreading out sooner. And it's just kind you know, of a two for one. One way to remember that is uh, start spreading out later. <laughs> that's that's great. That. The that song can, can double as an <laughs> as in a reminder of when you're going to start expanding your expanding business. Expanding where the ice cream is available. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What so, flavors do you make? A lot of different flavors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got uh, uh, cherry, earthquake. and Cherry, earthquake. Yeah. All of them have little earthquake puns. Oh. Uh, there is. That's not really a what's pun. What's the pun? Chuck. <laughs> what's the pun part of this equation? <laughs> Would you not call that a pun? No. <laughs> no, it's merely it's just a reference. Cherry, and then you added the word earthquake right? to it. Well, you guys are the writers, not me. So uh, there is like uh, like a pun would be something like earth shake if it's a shake, right? Using or your or, uh, or uh, can I, use I, it? I lava cherry? Uh huh. Can or I write these down? The the Olivia Tremor right. uh, chocolate. Yes, yes. You know, uh, can I use like, all? Can I use all of those, please? Because sure, those guess. are better than my name. I don't think I'm going to be using Michael. Are you going to be using? No, 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 no. You're no, not going to come up with a competing ice cream line. I guess I want to reserve the right to come up with a competing ice cream line, but okay, I, you yeah, can use these names until true. then. Okay. All right. I, I pro- I'll give them back to you if you're going to ever do that. Okay, so. great. Ma- um, magnum, magnumificent, like magnificent, mag- mag- magnific- mag- magma, mag- magnificent PI? Yeah, something like that. Okay. No, no, no. Mag- magnificent. And then Ambersons. A, no, and then a, and then a, Appleson's? And then a, and then a flavor. No, oh, I see. I see. Magmaificent. Chocolate. Chocolate. Got it. Got it. Uh, all right, Mark. By the way, what's yeah. your last name? You- uh, it's, it's a um, it's a famous last name, but I'm not related to um, Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard is. If oh, you always right. say like, "Are you related to Peter Sarsgaard?" No. So you didn't want to say so that we didn't have that conversation. Yeah, I was trying to avoid it. We almost made it. Okay, so Peter Sarsgaard. Yeah, but is I'm is not, the famous person the you're guy. you're Mark Skarsgård. Yeah. Okay, great. What do you have to plug? Anything? Well, I would just say if you're going to murder somebody, don't do two things. One is for my sake. One is Thanksgiving, like you mentioned, because then more bodies, more food everywhere. It's harder. It's harder. To clean yeah. up. Also upstairs. Then I got to go up the stairs. Uh, up and down and up and down. Oh, so if that's my. If I could ask you to just say, so say say your bedroom is upstairs and an intruder yeah. surprises you, yeah, do you right. try to lead the intruder downstairs? Mm-hmm. Uh, then I would on a merry chase. I would hope that that or if you know this is it and this is it, just jump out the window because then it's easier to clean up a lawn with a bunch of glass on the lawn. Glass and lawn, yeah, right. right? Mm-hmm. And then 
I would hope you still have access to haunt that house if it's, uh, you know, ad- slightly adjacent to the house. I don't know. I think you might be haunting a lawn. Then, you know, then you got to make that decision. There's worse than Unless they you. do an addition, unless the oh, new owners come in and do an addition. That's true. And that's true. You can suddenly, right. that would be so great if oh, you, you had to nice. haunt a lawn for a long time. Into, but then Ten then, years yeah. later, you're in the middle of a living and room. that guy that fell out of the airplane, all of a sudden somebody builds a high rise and now he's in a condo. They get the air rights to that? Right. Oh man, that would be amazing. Right. Um, I want to plug, let's see, uh, the comedy Bang Bang TV show. This Friday we have two episodes on IFC at 11 and 11.30. We have uh, Malin Ackerman at 11 She's and that's great. A, a great, great episode. She's fantastic. And She's Mike great. Coulter, uh, Netflix's Ooh. Luke Cage, uh, who, uh, just two wonderful awesome. episodes uh, and we're counting down. These are the we're in the last four episodes of the of the show, so uh, these are the final two before the finale night. So uh, uh, make sure to watch that this Friday uh, on IFC at eleven and eleven thirty. <gasps> what, are you are you surprised by that? Not surprised. Just um, it's great. Oh, so when something is great, you. Inhale sharply. Are you trying to clown me, though? No, I, I'm not trying to trick you, which would result in you being clowned. Okay, don't do that. Okay. Also, the every week, this Thursday night at the Groundlings is a great show, just so you know. Oh, really? Yeah. What show? It's Cooking with Gas. Cooking with Gas. Every week is fun. Oh, what know? time is that show? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. That's a good time for That's a show. Great. It's really fun every week. People are still awake, usually? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's close up the old plug bag. <laughs> Gonna listen to some plugs. Gonna listen to some plugs. Gonna listen to some plugs. Gonna get my info out. Gonna get my jobs on talked about. Gonna listen to some plugs. Talk about my job. Are you in the show? Are you in the show? I never know how to do the plugs when we're not done. I think that was good. All right. Well, thanks very much. Um, great show. I really enjoyed this. Michael Showalter, you have your sunglasses on in preparation for the daylight that uh, is just outside this door, I would imagine. Mm, yep. And Dr. Blouse, a, a wonderful meeting you. And uh, Thank time, you so much for having time me. Time to get, get on your stilts. Yep. And thank you for having me. Of course. And uh, Mark? Just don't clown me, dog. Okay, won't do it, dog. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye. (laughs) Hey, everyone, thanks for listening. And remember, support for Comedy Bang Bang comes from the new original comedy, Search Party, on TBS. Watch the mystery unravel as a lost soul and her group of friends search for a missing girl they barely even knew. You can binge the entire season of Search Party in one week, starting Monday, November 21st at 11, 10 Central, only on TBS. In 1962, a mysterious strangler committed the first of 13 random murders, shocking Boston and the world. Who were these women? And why would anyone want to kill them? It was the largest manhunt in the city's history. What is Mary Sullivan's picture doing on the front page of the paper with the Boston Strangler? Fifty years later, the cases remain open. Stranglers, the new crime series from Earwolf. Subscribe now in iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. This has been an Earwolf production, executive produced by Scott Ackerman and Chris Bannon. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.